Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the home of sport aviation. We're at Whitman Regional Airport, the Experimental Aircraft Association's 43rd annual fly-in convention. Thousands of people fly into Oshkosh every year, thousands more drive in. A few just drop right out of the sky. During the next hour, we'll visit some of the Oshkosh crowd and take a close look at the planes they fly. You'll see world-famous air show performers, the greatest racing planes of the 1930s, famous personalities from Space Shuttle Commander Hoot Gibson to race car driver and pilot Rusty Wallace, and more warbirds in the sky at one time than you'll ever see again. All this and more at EAA Oshkosh 95. Make sure your seatbelt is fastened, your seat back and tray tables are in their upright and locked position because we're about to take off. Welcome to Oshkosh Air Show 95. Oshkosh is a city of 55,000, located 80 miles north of Milwaukee on the west shore of Lake Winnebago. For one week each year, the sky above the city comes alive with every conceivable type of aircraft. The population of Oshkosh swells to 12 times its size. 850,000 people pass through the convention gates during the week. More than 2,700 show planes parked on concrete and grass ramps covering 1,400 acres of convention ground. They come singly and in packs. Flying in from just around the bend or all the way around the world. More than 70 countries are represented at the convention. This Quanta 747 with the crazy quilt paint scheme came all the way from the land down under. The colorful design is based on the art of Australia's native aborigines. It's appropriate that the image of the kangaroo is prominent since in Aborigine mythology, kangaroos gain the ability to fly at night. A total of 397 Australians made the trip. 396 flew in the 747. One came the hard way. John Johansson arrived a few minutes after the jetliner in a home-built RV-4. The airplane took two years to build and includes modified fuel tanks to enable him to achieve a lifelong dream. John intends to become the first Australian to fly a home-built around the world. 
He was reunited at Oshkosh with family who traveled aboard the 747. Oh man, wouldn't I, wouldn't I kill to be able to do this in my airplane? <laughs> John arrived by way of Fiji, Hango Pango, Christmas Island, and Hawaii. After a week break here, he traveled across Europe and Asia to his hometown of Adelaide. There's one time each day that everyone stops and pays close attention to what's going on in the sky. It's the middle of the afternoon, time for the daily air show. John D. Tucker incorporates traditional and original maneuvers in a routine he calls Sky Dance. year of an incredible 25-year run for the Eagles aerobatic flight team. The Eagles have thrilled audiences during more than a thousand performances and have a combined total of more than 44,000 hours in the air. They began as the Red Devils flying pit specials and made the changeover to their trademark Princeton Eagles in 1979. During their long careers, the Eagles have flown as stunt pilots and movies and have appeared on numerous television programs. Among them, they hold five national and two world aerobatic championships. Together, they form the longest running civilian flight team in history. Charlie, you're the leader. What are your thoughts on this last performance at Oshkosh? Well, I had a little radio problem on the, on the takeoff, but once we got that sorted out, uh, I thought it was a good show. The, the air was a lot better than I expected, a lot smoother. Uh, I'm going to miss it. I think all three of us, you know, have got to say that we're going to miss it. It's been a great run, though, you know, and we're proud of that. So uh, we'll be back next year and just be doing something a little different. What about this crowd, Gene? Isn't this a fantastic crowd? I mean, it's just fantastic event. You know, up there where we are, we can see how far back it goes. It's got to be 200,000 people there. Great crowd. Really responsive, too. We really appreciate it. Well, it's an EAA crowd, Tom, and you're the president, so it must make you feel proud. Well, it really does. You know, when you're out entertaining, when you're flying your show, you like to fly for an audience that appreciates it. And when it's your last show in an event like it was here, to see this kind of response, it really makes you feel good. We've had a lot of people come up and say, you we're going to miss you. We're sorry to see that you're not going to be flying as the Eagles. And 
you know what? It makes you feel good because it means you left an impact on them and that people really appreciated and enjoyed what you were doing. Ten high and the shockwave jet truck. In this corner, Sean D. Tucker and the 1-800 Collect Challenger. Man against man, machine against machine. Why do I feel like I'm doing WWF? Can you kick some tough planes butts along the way? But this one could be a little tougher. Well, Sean's uh, he's a good challenge. Uh, we have a lot of fun work together, and it's always a good close race. One way or the other, uh, but in the meantime, we have a lot of fun. Sure, go ahead, be a gentleman. Say something rotten about this guy, uh, Sean. All I want to say is this is an air show. This is about sky dancing. What the heck is a jet truck doing in Oshkosh? I don't want this guy here. Put him out there on the speedway where he belongs. So we're going to teach him a lesson today. I'm sorry, Kenny. You've had it. All right, the challenge is down, Ken. Jay, start turning those screws. No mercy to this. Each performer prepares for the race in his own unique way. For the Challenger, it's a little knife edge flight to limber up its muscles. Then a flip to invert it to test the 350 plus horsepower engine. He'll need it all to go up against 25,000 horsepower. And then into position and the race is on. that again. John starts out with an early lead. But Ken makes his move. And as he deploys his shoot. It's a draw. Stay where you are. We'll return to exciting air show action in the second half of the program. Also on tap, the results of the great cross-country flying race. And an interview with Space Shuttle Commander Hoot Gibson. So just like that, another week-long EAA Oshkosh flying convention is over and it's time to go. And since I get to choose each year how I leave, and it's been such a big year for aerobatics, especially with the Eagles' farewell performances, I thought I'd leave it a top aerobatic airplane, the Sukhoi. 